Welcome, Anchored Hope Church. We're so glad that you guys are joining us online this weekend. We hope that you're having a great Memorial Day weekend, and we hope that you spend some time with your friends, get some rest and renewal, and we would love it if you would stay up to date with what's going on in the life of the church. If you're new, if this is your first time watching, or if this morning you're in need of prayer or needing to talk to somebody, we would love it if you would text hi to the number on your screen. This is our text and church number, and it's a great way to stay up to date of what's going on in the life of the church. But also, if you text hi to this number, not only will you subscribe, but you'll also be able to talk to somebody uh, through via text right now. And so that we hope you choose to do that. Also, don't forget that this weekend we would love it if you would practice generosity by giving. You can give online. If you go to anchoredhope.church forward slash give, you can give online. We also have a text to give number uh, that's going to be available later on. But we would love it if you would practice generosity this morning to do, do something for somebody else by providing a life-changing experience for them. And we have many, many, many coming up. I hope that you'll join us next week as we are back in person person and live on Facebook as we begin a new series called The End. We are going to be talking about the end of the world, something that uh, seems to be a topic of conversation um, in our minds and, and, and in the world. And so we're going to be taking a, a little bit of a, a look at what that means and, and what it could possibly mean for the future and how it applies to us today. So I hope that you're going to join us for that series next week when we're back in person. But a lot of other cool stuff going on. You can always follow us on our YouTube page, our Facebook page um, at anchoredhope.church. All of our details are there, and so we hope you guys will join us for that. I'm going to be back in just a minute to share a special word with you today, but first I want you to check out this video. I went back and forth about what to talk about today. I changed my plan about three times. And then about eight hours ago, I decided that I would preach upon something that I've never preached on before. And it's a very interesting story. You may have heard it before. I was telling my wife about it before I came here. And she said, yeah, I've heard that story. And I said, but have you ever thought about it? This way, And so I want to share something uh, with you today that, that comes from Luke. And if you don't know who Luke is, the Gospel of Luke, Luke went around and interviewed people. He recorded people and talked to them a little bit about, you know, what they knew, what they heard, what they experienced with Jesus. And so this story comes from firsthand accounts of people who are with Jesus, people who are there, people who saw this interaction between Jesus, his followers, and the people he was staying with. And so if we look at it, this, this is what it tells us in Luke. It says, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary. Now, if you don't know uh, where this takes place, it takes place in the village of Bethany. And some of these na ma names may be actually kind of familiar. We're not talking about, you know, Jesus's relatives. We're talking about the Mary and the Martha who had a brother by the name of Lazarus. A lot of us have heard about Lazarus and remember the story of Lazarus. Well, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus were all siblings. And it's believed that Lazarus, Lazarus, Mary, and Martha, and Jesus were all very, very close to one another. That probably at some point early on in Jesus' ministry, they met each other and they became very friends, almost like brothers and sisters. Which is why when Lazarus dies later on and, and Jesus resurrects him, it was such an emotional thing. You know, we all remember that, that, that classic verse about how Jesus wept. He, we see how close he was with these people. And so this is the same Mary and the same Martha 
that you'll recognize from that story in that village of Bethany. And so what we see is that Jesus is traveling through, and he decides that he's going to stay with Martha and Mary. Now, Martha was actually the head of the household. Actually, the name Martha actually means that she, it means in Arabic, lady or the lady. So Martha was the boss. Martha was the head of the household, and Jesus is going through, and he's not just staying there like, I need a place to stay, but anytime Jesus stayed somewhere, it was somewhat, somewhat of a social event. And so Jesus was there, and obviously other people were there. Jesus was probably teaching, and Martha was entertaining people. Martha was cooking, and Martha was cleaning, and Martha was making sure that everything was taken care of. And if Mary was there, Mary was actually there to help out. She was kind of working for Martha at the time. And so they're there, and Jesus is there, and there's a lot of people, and Martha is entertaining, and Martha is cleaning and cooking and making sure everything is perfect for everybody. And then it tells us this, this next part. It says, she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he had said. So all of a sudden, Mary, she comes to work. She comes to help Martha. And that word, also, it's not actually in your NIV text, but it's in the original text. And what it means is that Mary, she decided to, that she was going to go and sit at the Lord's feet. So she, she left her job, she left what she was doing, and she decided, I'm not going to help Martha out in what, what she's trying to accomplish. Instead, I'm going to go and I'm going to sit at the feet of Jesus, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen. I'm going to genuinely listen listen to what Jesus has to say. And this is what it says next. It says, but Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. So she came to him, came to Jesus and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. She, she comes to Jesus and she's going, hey, what, 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 what's the deal here? I mean, there's a lot that needs to be done. There's cooking, there's cleaning, there's all these things that need to be done. And it says she was distracted by the preparations that, that had to be made. Things had to get done. She was distracted and she came to Jesus and she said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me? And then this is how Jesus replies to her. He says this, he says, Martha, Martha. The Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things. There are not too many places in the Bible where Jesus repeats people's names twice. There's a couple times where Jesus talks to Simon and he says, Simon, Simon. There's a couple places where he's trying to get somebody's attention and he has to say their name twice. But it's a very unique thing. But in all the situations where Jesus says someone's name twice, they're frantic. They're worried. They're, they're, they're moving and they're pacing and, and they're going all over the place. And it says that she was, he said, I can see that you are worried and upset about many things. She was anxious, but not anxious as in I'm worried about the future. It was more like this. It was more like I'm anxious about getting things done. Have you ever felt like that? Have you ever felt anxious about what needed to be done? Anxious about where you needed to be? Anxious about how things looked? Anxious about what people thought about you and what was going on? That's exactly how Martha felt. And she's, she's darting and she's moving and she's worried. I mean, picture it in your mind for just a minute. She may have even gone up to Jesus and talked to Jesus while she's cooking something or while she's drying off a dish. She's literally working while she's addressing the work that needs to be done with Jesus. And she goes to Jesus and she goes, um, hello, are you worried at all that my sister has decided to leave me and instead sit at your feet? And listen to you talk. Are you at all bothered by this at all? And Jesus says, I can see something is, is bothering you. Martha, Martha. I can almost picture him taking his hands and just putting them on her shoulders, trying to get her to just stop moving for a minute and, and to look Jesus in the eye. You know, I, I have a really bad habit. When I'm, when I'm at an event, when we're doing something in the community, 
I want everybody to have a good experience. I want everything to go really well. And so I constantly just kind of run around and, and double check everything. I, I'm constantly wondering if this, is, if this is going well, if this is in place, if everybody knows where they're supposed to be. And I'm, I, I run around and I, I mean, you can just see it in my eyes. I mean, my eyes are just kind of darting around. And my mom, she, she had a, a saying for, for this. She used to call it this, running around like a chicken with your head cut off. Sometimes that's how I look. Like I'm like a chicken with its head cut off, just running around. And this is how Martha felt. This is how sometimes you and I felt. And, and let me ask you a question. The question is this. Do, do you ever feel like you've got a lot to do or you've bit off more than you can chew? You ever feel like that? Do you ever feel like you have so many plates spinning in the air? So many plates spinning in the air that you can't keep up. So many balls in the air that you're trying to juggle. So many things that you're trying to get done. So many uh, kids or people, places you're trying to get them to be. So many people you're trying to make happy. So many things you're, you're trying to make sure are done properly. And you're just running around from thing to thing, getting person, uh, getting person to person, making sure that this person's happy and this person is satisfied and, and, and my spouse is happy and my kids are happy and my boss is happy and you're trying to satisfy everybody and do so much that it just it, it gets to the point where you're so anxious about the so many of the things that you have going on and, and, and the good word for you today is that you know what when you feel like that Jesus sees it Jesus would would look at you and he would say this he would say I see that you are worried and upset about many things Jesus would say what he said to Martha I I see you and I see how busy you are. I see all the plates that you're trying to spin. I see all the balls that you're trying to juggle. I see all the people that you're trying to, to make happy right now. He sees that and he's a bit bothered by it. Because this is what he says to Martha next. He says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. But few things are needed or indeed only one. Jesus sees all of the busyness that Martha has involved herself with. All the things she's trying to get done, all the places that she's trying to make sure are clean, all the food that she's trying to prepare. While everybody else is sitting at the feet of Jesus, including her sister, listening to Jesus, being fulfilled by Jesus, Martha's in the other room just trying to get things done, trying to make sure everybody's happy. And Jesus looks at her and he says, these few things that you're doing are, are not even needed. Actually, there's, there's only one thing that is needed. You know, a, a, as we get back to the new normal, or, or, or old normal, really, in many cases, I, I'm starting to see a trend. I'm starting to see, you know, as the world opens back up and mandates end and, and things start to change, a lot of us, were, we're going back to our old routine, Right? And for many of us, our, our old routine was, well, some of us were a shuttle bus, taking kids from, from ball game to ball game, thing to thing, activity to activity. Uh, some of us uh, were, were busy with our jobs, and, and, and there were high demands on us, things we had to get done, sometimes involving us to, to work late. And then sometimes it's not just our job, but it's the extra jobs that we take on as well that, that, that keep us out, that, that keep us up, that keep us busy, that exhaust us, that, that run us down. Uh, for some of us, it's responsibilities or extracurricular tasks that we take on or, or hobbies that we have. And I'm starting to see us slowly uh, fill our schedule back up. Our schedule that was somewhat taken away from us is suddenly back. And it seems like all the way from Sunday to Sunday, from midnight to midnight, from dusk till dawn, we're busy. We have places to be. We have things to do. We have people that we have to make sure are satisfied, people we have to entertain. And for Martha, there was a lot of things that she did that, well, Jesus said weren't really needed. He looked at her and he said something like this. He said, most of the things you spend your time worrying about doing aren't even needed. You sure are worried about doing a lot. You sure are worried about making a lot of people happy. You sure are worried about all of this, all of these to-do things you have to do and places you have to be. 
And the thing is, is that what Martha was doing, well, it, it wasn't that it was wrong, right? It wasn't that what she was doing was, was wrong in place of right. It's that the things that she was worried about, the things that she was doing, the things that she was filling her, her time and her energy with, were, well, they were incidental in place of all important. The things that Martha was doing, well, they were temporal in place of eternal. What Jesus was trying to tell her is that the things that you're, you're filling your time with, the things that you're filling your energy with, they're not needed. And the thing is, is that when they take up so much of your time that it takes you apart, away from what's really important, well, that's no good. Let me ask you a question, and this is a bit personal. Think of it like this. How much of your time and your energy do you spend pleasing and entertaining other people? Or think of it like this way. How much of your time and your energy do you spend working on your image and your reputation? How much of your schedule and the things that you do, how, how much are they about pleasing other people, about making other people happy, about making sure other people are okay? Making sure people are, 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 are pleased with you. The things that make you feel good enough. Things that you feel like uh, lift you up. That make you look good to other people. How much of your time is spent taking care of other people and making other people happy. And just doing busy work that really has no eternal value. But like he says to Mar Martha, it's stuff that's temporal. Things that are material. Things that... Don't impact eternity at all. See, he, he says to her, he goes, look, all the things that you're so worried about getting done, well, they don't really need to be done because there's more important things at hand. And then Jesus refers back to Martha's sister, Mary, and he says this. He says, Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. You know, in, in the original translation of this, what it says about Mary is this. It says, Mary has chosen the good part. M Mary has chosen the good part, was it, which was actually a common phrase at the Feast of Honor uh, to, to say that they had chosen what was best. They had chosen the good part of the feast. And he looks at Mary and he goes, uh, Mary has, has chosen what is best. Mary has chosen the good part. See, she has decided to, to leave her to-do list, to leave her responsibilities, and, and to come and, and, and sit at my feet, and to listen to me, and, and to be with me. And that, that is what is best. It's what's best for her. It's what's best for me. It's even what's best for others. And I, I want you to think about that for just a minute. Think about what Mary did. Yes, Mary agreed to come and, and to work for Martha and to do what, what Martha needed her to do. But it, it, at some point, she decided that that wasn't really what was important. That she should give up those responsibilities. That she should walk away from her to-do list. That she needed to stop caring about entertaining other people or what other people thought. And she, almost like a child, came and, and humbly sat at Jesus' feet, genuinely wanting to listen and learn from Jesus. Let me ask you something. You have a to-do list. You have people that you want to make sure are pleased and happy and, and, and taken care of, which is all fine and good. And, and you have a, an image and a reputation to keep. And I'm sure that a lot of things that you do, you do to make sure that that reputation and image are, are, are kept intact. And hey, who doesn't want to be liked, right? But let me ask you something. Does your to-do list, does your schedule... Does all the stuff that you have to get done or all the things you sign up for, does it, does it take you away from being at the feet of Jesus? I mean, at the end of the day, after you've spent so much time taking care of other people and pleasing other people and entertaining other people and, and making sure everybody else is okay, do you, do you have time to, to come and, and sit at the feet of Jesus and, and pray to your Father in heaven? Do you have time at the end of the day? Do you have energy to... To open up your Bible and, and, and to read the word of God and, and to learn about who Jesus was when he walked this earth and maybe what his plans and his will are for you. 
Do you have time, as we, we talked about in our series on prayer, to, to go into a room and shut the door with privacy and intimacy and, and hear from the word of the Lord and hear for what he wants for your life, what his will is? See, I, I think a lot of us, we, we fill up so much of our time and so much of our schedule, and we're so busy doing, so busy entertaining so busy building an image and a reputation for ourselves, so, so busy making sure our boss is happy and our kids are happy and our spouse is happy and, and our friends are happy and, and everyone thinks the world of us that we do so much that we, we, we push Jesus out of the way. We don't have time to be at the feet of Jesus. And see, the thing is, is, is this. When we're, when we're stressed about getting things done, and anxious about what people think, concerned that everyone is happy, and upset about the lack of help that we have, well, are we really in the best place that we can be? Because this is how Martha felt. And for some of you, if you're honest, this is exactly how you would feel as well, right? You feel stressed about all the things that you have to get done. You feel anxious about what people think, about how you're doing and, and, and how well you're performing. You're, you're concerned that everyone is happy. You want everyone to be happy with you. You want everyone to be good. And you're, you're upset about the lack of help because you want to do so well. But the thing is, is Jesus looks at that, that path, that journey, that goal, and he goes, you are doing so many, few, so many things that are not actually needed. When indeed, there's only one that, that truly matters. And it's, it's that one thing that truly matters that you're so busy doing, so busy accomplishing, that, that you're pushing out. That you're not able to do. And then, I think Jesus would, would say this to every single one of us. He would put his hands on our shoulders and he would say our name twice. He would say, Michael, Michael. Just, just trying to get me to, to stand still for a minute and to, to look him in the eye. To, to put the dishes down, to, to put the work down, to put the, the keys down because I'm trying to get to the next place that I have to be. To put my phone down and he's, he's just trying to grab me by the shoulders and, and get me to look him in the eye. And he wants to say to me and he wants to say to you, I see that you are worried and upset about many things, but few, few things are needed. Or indeed, only one. You know, we're online this weekend. And we told everybody not to come to in-person service. Because truth be told, I feel like we all need a little bit of a break. See, truth be told, sometimes even church can become something that we just do. For some of us, we even come to church. And it's not about coming to the feet of Jesus. It's about, I have a job to do. I have something to get done. Even the job that we do or how we serve at this church, it could very quickly, easily become something that we do to, to lift ourselves up, to make ourselves feel good, to invest in our image and our reputation. But the thing is, is that if it becomes that, then, well, we're no better than Martha in the kitchen trying to entertain everybody. The, the thing is, is that we all have to car carve out time and space to stop doing, to stop trying to entertain, to stop trying to appease other people, to stop investing in our own image and our reputation, and instead just humbly come to the feet of Jesus and listen, to be with him, to put everything else aside. And you know, just how Mary ticked off Martha, well, yeah, I'm sure that some of us, if we walked away from some things, if we canceled th some things from our schedule, if we started to tell people that, I'm sorry, I, I can't take on more. I need to put some plates down. I need to stop wearing so many hats. I need to stop saying yes to everything. Then, well, I'm sure we're going to tick off some people too. But, but sometimes that's what's necessary. Sometimes it's, it's what's needed. Sometimes it's, it's what's best. Because sometimes if we don't say no to some things, if we don't put some things down, if we, if we don't stop doing, well, then we miss the good part in Jesus' words. And, and I don't know about you, but for me, I, I want to be a Mary and not a Martha. I, I want to choose the good part. 
I, even if it means putting a few things down, I, I want to make sure that what I focus on most is what's most important. Being at the feet of Jesus. The eternal things. The all-important things. Now, if you read this story in your Bible, it simply ends there and it goes on to the next chapter. And we really don't know what happened next. But I kind of think that it was written that way for a reason. We don't know what Martha did. We, we don't know what Martha did next, but it's probably best. But one of two things happened, right? I mean, either Martha listened to Jesus and she put down the dishes, put down the food, turned off the oven, left the kitchen and, and came and joined Jesus and, and, and sat, at, sat at his feet right next to his sister Mary and, and listened. Or Martha did what a lot of us do. We blew it off, went back into the kitchen, continued to, to stir the food, continued to clean the dishes, continued to go around and, and throw trash away and pick up after people. And, and, and she probably, like a lot of us did, continued to mumble under her breath how upset she was that there wasn't enough help, that things weren't going to get done, that things weren't perfect, that people were going to be upset, worried about what people would say because things didn't look or things didn't taste the way they were supposed to. And see, I think you and I, we, we have the same choice in front of us. It's probably good that we don't know exactly what Martha did. It's probably good that it's kind of an open-ended story. Because for you, this weekend, you, you have an opportunity to rest, to spend time with family. You probably have time off work. We, we didn't have in-person service here this morning. And so it's really uh, a time for you to reflect. But the question is, is what are you going to do next week? Next week, is, as school ends and your summer schedule begins, as you go back to work, are, are you going to take this lesson and just go back to doing what you've been doing? Are you going to continue to fill up your schedule and continue to bust people around and, and make sure everybody's happy and everybody's taken care of and everybody's satisfied and everybody thinks that you're a good mom or you're a good dad or you're a good brother or you're a good sister? Are you going to continue to, to do what you do at work and continue saying yes and taking on responsibilities and telling people you'll be there even though you've told multiple people you would be there and now you have to choose about where you're actually going to be? Are you going to continue to load yourself up with the burden Burden of being somebody that nobody else is really asking you to be? Are you going to continue to take on that responsibility of making sure everybody is happy? Because if you take on that task, no doubt you're going to be stressed and you're going to be anxious and you're going to be upset and you're going to be frustrated at the, the lack of motivation and help that you have around you. And Jesus says, those things that you're anxious about, those things that you're worrying about, those things that you're filling your schedule up, they're not what's most important. Instead, focus on what is most important. Instead, prioritize your life and remember that outside of those things that, that go away, that fade away, is something much deeper, something much more important, and something that that Jesus wants to do in your life. But it takes time and energy, not just put towards everything that has to be done, but making sure we prioritize time to come to the feet of Jesus and to focus on what is most important. So this weekend, as you're with friends or family, as you're, you're driving and traveling, I'm sure you're going to have some time to possibly discuss this, maybe right after the message. And I have two discussion questions I'd love for you to talk about. The first one is this. Is there any area of your life where you are stressed about getting things done, anxious about what people think, concerned that everyone is happy, and upset about the lack of help you have? If there is an area of your life where this echoes your same feelings, ask yourself a really important question. And that's question number two. Am I cho choosing the good part? Are you filling your life up with so much of a to-do list that you're missing the good part, that you're missing out on being at the feet of Jesus, that you're missing out on spending time speaking to your Father in heaven? Are you, even in church, are, are, you, are you missing out 
on growing in your relationship with Christ because you're so busy doing things for the church? Ask yourself that question. Reflect on that. Reflect on that as a, as a couple. Reflect on that as a family. And ask yourself, are, are we really doing what's most important? Are we, are we really making sure that we're prioritizing the good part? Or are we doing this also that people accept us and love us? So that people around us at work, people around us, uh, our friends, our family, are happy with us. Is that what it's about? Is that what your life has become? Or maybe, just maybe, we need to do a little bit of rearranging. That's my challenge to you today. And as you have this weekend off and you go back to work, don't, don't let this next week, don't let this next month be the same as it's always been. It's time to, to put things down. It's time to give up some responsibilities. It's time to not worry about those things over there and, 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 and put them down and, and to come and be at the feet of Jesus. Focusing on the good part. To do what's best. What's best for you. What's best with your relationship with God. And in the end, what's best for everybody. Because where would we be if our relationship with God isn't the best that it can be? So I'm going to pray for you this morning and then our band is going to lead us in, in some worship this morning. But as we pray, I just want you to take a moment to reflect on the story that we've just heard. Father God, we come to you this weekend. And God, as we've heard this story, every single one of us have to face a question. Are we a, are we a Martha or are we a Mary? God, I think all of us could admit that there's some areas of our life where we are very much like a Martha, where we're very worried about being busy, about entertaining, about making sure everyone is happy, and sometimes the to-do list and the places we have to be, it stresses us out. But God, would you remind us what is most important? God, would you bring us back to, to remembering that what's most important is, is, is being at the feet of Jesus, is, is taking the time to, to choose the good part. To making sure that we don't exhaust ourselves and stress ourselves so much that at the end of the day, we don't have time to, to connect with you, to align our will with your will, to, to pray and, and spend time with you, to learn from you, Lord. Lord, would you every day, not just on Sunday, but every day, would you help us to prioritize our life to where we're always focusing on what's, what's most important, the things that are all important, the things that matter for eternity, Lord. Would you help us to do that this week? Would you help us to prioritize our life as a family, as a couple, as an individual, Lord? We pray these things in your name. Amen. That the Spirit of the Lord Still what you do Bodies still 